Challenges, limitations, decisions. These are the three things that we're going to run in frequently while working on this page. And there's a number of them. I'm going to try not to talk too much about them, but just point them out and then see what solutions we can find to them. The first one I just want to mention is that I've gone through four iterations of this design, especially this area at the bottom. This was my original one. And how I had achieved this by adding it into two columns. This is a column over here, and this is my second column. Then I applied padding to the block here, and I applied padding here, 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 and here. I ran into so many, so many issues with this. Then I went into a second version of this. I put it in a row container. Still, I had issues with it. And I'll tell you soon what the issues were. Then I don't know where it came up. I remember, I think it was one of the designs I had seen in Astra or Suki or even Dimitri and, and, and the team's design. I remember instead of adding this space here or here, add another column. So I designed it then with three columns, column one, column two, and column three. Still, I had some issues. And the last one, which I'm going to settle on today, I'm going to use four columns. Now, why did I go through all of these processes? The reason I went through all of them is because this thing looks absolutely horrendous when you go into mobile display. And those are the decisions we are talking about because these kind of designs, they are desktop designs. They look really good on desktops, but they don't work on mobile designs. They just don't. And I actually saw on the Brizzy forum, was it to yesterday or on Monday? Where are we today? Monday, I think I saw somebody say, why is the mobile so different from the desktop? That doesn't make sense. No, it absolutely makes sense. The mobile experience is completely different and you cannot achieve this on a mobile display. It just doesn't make sense to even try and do it. And this showed me again how much my brain is set on doing things for the desktop and that I don't think in terms of mobile at mobile first, Sterling Williams. That is how it should be. So going through this page, making this page, I want you to constantly see the challenges we're running into mobile and the possible workarounds for that. Not always the best workarounds, but ones that we can live with. Let's begin. Stop the talking. I bring in a block and I'll start with my background. Bring in my image. This beautiful image. I just love this image. And then what I'm going to do is set the block on full width. Right, so here we go. Our block is on full width. I'm going to use four columns. So up here to settings, on the plus, add a new column and another one, add a new column. Since the last update, two things have happened. If I grab the handle barrier in the middle, you will see I don't see a heads up display telling me the percentage, right? So this has been raised, but it's something at this moment, if you want to set it on 10%, you have to guess what is 10%. There's nothing telling you at this moment at all what the settings are. The second thing I notice is that add a new block now is here, and I'm not sure if that is an intentional design, but it has moved from being a square block. And you can just check the previous video from that one to this one. The update had brought in this new GUI for the add a new, blo add a new block, All right? So we've got our four containers here, our four columns. And what I'll do is I'm going to use this one for the space on the right. I'm going to use this one for my space, for my padding. I'm actually going to cheat a little bit there. And this is going to be my main area. So what I want is around 6040, and I'm guessing this is 6040. And you know, when it comes to that, it's just really bad. I am. Bring in the elements. We're going to have a heading, heading. So I'll bring in the text and then below that, I want some space. So I'll drag in a spacer and then this will be my main heading and this will be my above title. And then over here, we'll also have book and appointments. Bring in that one and drop that one over there. So what I'll do now is I'm going to put in the background so that we can have an idea of how it will look. Year, 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 color. And then this one. So already I know I want to make it, what is it, 70, 30, somewhere here. And for this one, I'm going to add 
a white background and put it around 20%. Now, here's the thing. Previously, I did all of this in one column. These two were one column. And then I just applied padding to the column. But now in this one, I'm showing you how you can do this. But now we're running into a problem because there is no background for this one. So I'll have to apply the same. And that means I have to bring this one exactly also down to 20. So your hand has to be very, very delicate, making sure that these two backgrounds match. Do you see what we've done there? So before we continue, we want to get this to the bottom of this block. And to get it at the bottom of the block, we have to get rid of the padding here. You can click and drag it up, but you're always going to be left with that 15 pixels. So go into the settings of the block, more settings, and then over here, padding for the bottom one, just drag it down. So this is how you get it to the bottom. I've seen a lot of questions regarding this. It's actually super easy putting something in a block and then putting it at the bottom. And then we want to have the image in view. So we just click and drag at the top. And that's how we bring it in. Let's go and change our content. I'm going to triple click in the first text and then caps on my keyboard go for pro Ooh, let's put it on white first. Otherwise, we're not going to see a thing. Professional care since 2011. Now I'm going to set my styling. Go to topography and I'm going to choose first which one I want it to be. I'll call this one above title. And once I set it on above title, it will change here. After you've done that, I'll go here to my styling. I'll go for my above title. And now I will do my changes here so that if I want to make any changes in the future to it, I can do it from here. We'll put it on open suns. And then here I'm going to put it on 16. And let's make it normal. Then the line height, because it's single line, I'm going to put it on one. And for the letter spacing, I'm going to go to town and put it on five. Right, and that's how we did that one. My spacer, I can drag it, just make it a little bit smaller, or you can click on the cog and type it in here. I'll go for 15. And then for this one, let's first put it on white. Triple click to select everything. We call it New Day Spa. Again, I'm going to go to Topography and choose my style first, which will be my heading one. After I've done that, I go again here to my styling, look for heading one, and then here I choose Prata. And what size will I go for? I think let's go big, 90. I think that's where I had it. At the, I had it bigger and I changed it to 90. We leave it on normal line height. Again, I'm going to put it on one. Then you see this letter spacing of minus one point. I'm going to put it on zero. There we go. Now, as I had done previously, I had put spacing in terms of padding in the top and the bottom. But I've just decided this time I'm going to grab my spacer, drop it in the top and drop it in the bottom. And when I tried it, I looked at it and I was pretty satisfied. And now instead of going every time to my column settings, more settings, and then playing around with the padding, I can simply drag it around like this. And this also gives you a little bit more flexibility when you go into tablet and mobile displays. Your choice, your preference, what you want to do here. Some people will say every element you add to your page is making it slow and extra coding and it's the end of the world. And people like me, well, I know, I know. Sometimes I just don't care. Let's go then to this one over here and let's triple click again. And we type in here in caps book and appointment. And we're going to use the same styling as we did for this one. So in this case, I don't need to go and set up everything. I'm going to go to topography and choose above title. But we'll make a few changes here because it doesn't look good. First thing is I'll put it on bold. Next is I'll choose this color here, second from the left. Then I'm going to center align it with the alignments. Go to the column, settings for the column, and click here. Now I have to remember vertical alignment. Vert center to vertical alignment. And at this point here, I want to stop. 
Because if you sit back for a moment, it doesn't look bad. If you think this looks good, this is what you want for your site, you can stop here. You don't have to bring in the glitter and the fancy twirls and swirls, which we are going to do next. Keeping it simple is sometimes the best way to go. And there's nothing wrong with this. The reason why we bring in the smooth round corners, you know, it's that spa, it's that relaxation kind of thing. It's that, that, that nice little touch you want to do with it. But we're going to run into a challenge. What I'm going to do at this point is that I'm going to duplicate this just so that you can see later what is going to happen when we run into the challenge. Let's add another block here in the middle so we can differentiate between the two and stick to the one at the top. So we've made this one at the bottom. I, I also could have just gone and save it and then we can load it later again. Right, so let's get back to this one, rounded corners. Let's go to the column here. And because the background is applied to the column, if you want the rounded corner, you also have to go to the column. More settings, and over here, here are your corners. You have to delink them, and your problem is that this side bar currently overlaps everything you are doing here. You're not going to see that corner that you are going to try and smoothen out. So look for the top right, it's this one, drag it, and there you have a little bit of it. Let's go back into it. And I'm going to type in 250. The maximum it goes is 100, but you can type in more. So I'll go for 250. And that will give me that super smooth rounded corner. Now I want to apply it to this side. And again, there are two styling options you can go for here. One is to make a rounded corner for the entire block. So if we go to the block, settings, more settings, again, same thing here, corners, and then bottom left hand corner, 250. Ooh. 2300, Ooh. oh, you know, sometimes you make a mistake and you're like, hey, I like that. So if you go for the 250 for the block, you get this white background. So have a look at that. That could be what you are after. On the other hand, I'm going to undo, Control Command Z, and again, and again, there we go. On the other hand, you can have a different effect here. Go to the column, this one that we created here, more settings, and then Oh, this is margins corner over here. And let's type in 250. Good. So this is the effect you can go for. You can choose. I showed you three ways. You can go square, you can go corners, you can go block corners, or you can just go for the corner like this. The other option you have here, and this is something that I'm not always going to present because I used to be a big fan of entrance animations, and lately I'm not. Personal choice preferences, you can do it, I do it, but I'm slowly doing it less because I think, especially on mobiles, it is distracting. Adding animation, your choice, and animation can be done anywhere. You go to the column, settings, more settings, and then under advanced, you will see your entrance animations over here. Your choice, what we can do for this one, let's bring in fade in right. Fade in right, yes, and for this one and this one, both of them we will say fade in bottom. So advanced, fade in up, or it will be fade, fade up big. Let's do this one as well, fade up big. Boom, fade up big. Okay, so those two should be coming in at the same time. Let's update our massive design and go and preview it on the front end and see if those animations play nicely. Yeah, you see, it looks good. <laughs> I just gave you this long speech over animation and then I'm impressed. Yeah, so <laughs> it looks good. Right, so here we are. Let's go into cell phone display now and look at those challenges we will face. Right, okay, so there's the one at the bottom. Here is the problem. I can still see doing something with the rounded corners. And if you go to this column here, settings and more settings or settings, you will see the corner appears over here. Now, how it works in Brizzy, anything that appears in your mobile should not affect tablet and desktop. You heard me use the word should not. I didn't say will not, because this is the one case where it will. You can make changes to padding, margins, and everything else here, and it will not translate to your tablet and your desktop. 
However, there's a glitch with the corners. So if I reduce this corner and I take it away and I go back to desktop, it's gone. You see, there's still a little, little left there. So this means your corners aren't responsive at this moment. And at this moment, you're not going to get away from it. So let's go back to this corner here and I'll explain to you what I'm talking about. Where are we? Put it at 250. Good. Let's go back into this. These rounded corners, you are not going to try and do this. You can grab these handles and drag them in next to each other. You can try that. It's not going to look good. Let's see. Click there. Click there. And then for this one, we are going to disable it. This one also disable it. And then right. You see, we are running into issues and I'm saying that, but I'm starting to think it doesn't look that bad. Okay, reduce the padding at the bottom. Let's see what we can do. Padding, take it away. And then what do we have here? Why do we have that space? Column, let's see, put it at zero. Okay, column, right, that's where we're getting that from. So our padding for the columns. Okay, and then how can we, right, so let's reduce the size here for these guys. It's already very, very small. I think, in fact, I'm going to increase it. And then for New Day Spa, sh shall we increase that too? It's currently at 40. Let's do that and put the line, da line height down. Letter spacing, increase it a little bit. Okay. Let's drag it out like this. Hmm. I'm kind of impressed what's going on here. Okay, and now we have this problem. This is again limitations. Remember the three words I told you at the beginning. Limitations, challenges, and decisions you have to make. If we go to our container, which is our block, you will see there is no padding or anything applied to the left or the right. If we go to this column, you will see there is nothing left and right. This is currently how it's set. So. It appears with that if we update it. Let's go view it on the front end. And we bring in a cell phone. Let's enable this one over here. Enable developer mode. And let's grab phone over here. Right. So you see that space appears here. As I'm looking at this, I can do something with this. I think it is quite possible that I can do something with this as it is at the moment. You'll have to go and tweak that, my dear friend. And the way we're going to do that is click here on column. But before I do that, I'm going to go up here to my block settings. And then for my padding on the left and the right, I'm going to add 25 pixels. Why am I doing that? The reason I'm doing that is because that is a good constraint at this moment for working with in Brizzy Mobile for ensuring it looks good on iPhones and Samsung Galaxy Xs because of that elongated display that we have for the long view. This, the current setting for the Brizzy Mobile display, if you make it too wide, you're going to have cut off here. So that is why I go now to my padding for my block and I add that on the left and the right, it's like a safety zone. What we can do now is go here to our column and then on our margin on the left at a negative margin. And then we go to the padding, we bring the padding in. Same for this one. Margin on the right. and then padding on the right. Right? Not bad. And I think we need to add some padding here at the bottom for this one. And there's actually a spacer there. So I'm just going to drag the spacer and at the top as well. Let's save it. We've done quite a good rescue here, if I must so say myself. And I will. Let's refresh and see how that looks now on this iPhone. Okay, reload, and we just wait for the phone to update. 
we've achieved it, right? So maybe because we want to have it fit on the entire display, what we'll have to do here is go to the top and reduce some, where am I now? Why does I want to reduce at the top? Reduce it a little bit, right? That is one way. You saw we, we are working, we're running into a number of challenges working with this, but there are ways around it. And it's just that you have to go and sit and think about it and you're going to have this overlap, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. That is why I had brought in the second one. Where am I now? Let's close this one so we don't get confused. This is why I brought in this second one at the bottom. You can do your rounded corners, but let's say you decide to go for the square corners. You have a much easier layout that you can go for. So let's look at option number two. We go to mobile first. And what I'm going to do here, you see here, it looks like a button already. Excellent, perfect. The first one I'll do is go up here and disable on mobile. For those of you who don't know, when I click here on disable on mobile, it is gone, but it isn't gone. It is just out of view. But if you want to know, hey, wait a minute, that thing I disabled, I want to bring it back. Where do I get it? Go down here to the toolbar in the bottom right hand corner and you see this little eye icon with the slash through it. If you click it, you will show that hidden element and it will be blurred. So you can decide here whether you want to see those hidden elements or not. Same if we go to the one that we created here at the top, we have two elements. You see here's a blurred one and then here's a blurred one. And the problem with leaving them there while you're working is it actually stretches your whole design. So that's why you want to disable seeing them so that you can see how it will look. Let's go then again to the one here at the bottom. And what I want to do, can I reorder from here? No, I just want to add some space here at the bottom. So I'm going to bring in another block here. Go back to mobile. And now what I'll do here is I can leave, what is this, a column. I'm going to take this column and disable it as well. And here I'm going to go for a complete different design. Just like the tip I gave you for the previous one. I'll go to my block, settings, and then here for my padding, on the left and right, I'll add 25 pixels. That's just now my standard safety zone. Next thing I will do is I'll click on the first text and I will center align it. Second one, center align it. And look at that. Look at that. That's it. You don't have to do anything more. Let's add some space in the top and the bottom. You've got a good thing going here, Bobby. Maybe you can make this one a little bit bigger. And if we want to, we can let this one run into two lines. Okay, and reduce the line height. And you have the image still there. The image looks very good. Let's add a little bit more space at the top. Okay, this is a very good idea. Now let's just quickly talk about what we will do at the end. This entire rose area here, we will turn into a button. We want people to book an appointment. We want to convert some visitors into customers. How we will do that, and we'll show you that in a later video, is to link this entire column. This is a great feature in Brizzy. You can link anything. So when you go here to columns and you click here on link, you will see the options here to link it or to another block. And this is what we will be doing on this page. Right, so here is your first decision you have to make. Do I wanna go for rounded corners? or do I wanna go for square corners? And then your second decision to make for your mobile is do I want this? Does this look better or does this look better? And you're going to probably run into this situation. I like the rounded corners on the desktop, but I like this design on the mobile. So how are you going to get around that? The way you're gonna get around that is you're going to make two. So what I'll do here, is I'm going to delete this. What I'm showing you now is not my most favorite technique because it means you're loading double information actually onto your page, but it is a very good workaround. So the first thing is I want this one to appear on my desktop display. I do not want this one to appear. Go to the block, settings, more settings, then go to advanced and say show on desktop, disable and it's removed because we had this icon here to not show, to hide them. If I wanna see those things that I have hidden, I just click on it and there it is. But you will see that it is blurred out, except the background. Interesting, that should be blurred out too. 
Let's put it back on hide the disabled elements. Now when I go to my mobile, both of them are still here. So I want to keep this one for mobile, but I want to hide this one on mobile. Let's click on the settings and over here, disable on mobile, same thing. Before we get too excited and go look at it on the front end, what did we forget, Peter? Okay, Tommy, yes, tablet. We forgot tablet. So here we are in our tablet view and very similar to what we ran into with our mobile view is problems regarding the areas on the left and the right and then of course corners as well. As I'm looking at this and I think in terms of mobile, boy, I think even this design here in the middle looks good with the space at the bottom and the space at the top. I, I just think it looks so good, don't you, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to dis this one I decide I go with this one and I'm going to leave it like that I think this looks pretty nifty let's save it and then we go and do the whole test on the front end to see if it is successful preview preview over here and let's go to me favorites okay so desktop no complaints we think it looks good it's a nice design very impactful image and we have some great animation comes in, show us the beautiful lady, and then New Day Spa, professional care. And then, if I were on my tablet, how will it look? Oh, same thing, very good. And you can also test it in landscape view. And what you're going to see when you test it in landscape view is that you actually get the desktop view, right? So don't be confused. In Brizzy, your tablet view is your portrait view as if somebody is holding it like a book. But the moment you switch it, it is going to apply landscape view. Right. Uh, where are we? Let's go to Samsung. And let's put it here. There we go. You see here, this is the corners that I've been talking about. Why is this one so big? It's because I put it that big. And you have to go back and make changes and changes. So let's add a little bit of padding here to the middle as well. That will give us also some idea. Padding, padding over here. I'm going to add about 10 pixels on both sides. And I think that one was too big. I didn't like it. I'm going to bring it down to 18. Let me see. The rest looked okay. Let's bring this down to 42. Let's update it. and go and refresh our work. Good, that's it. I like it, I like it. So you can see how responsive it is. Over here on the right, we have our desktop. Over here on the left, we have it for our mobile. And don't let these things get you down. I wanna tell you about feeling down over design. If you look here at the bottom corner, my career in Adobe started with Adobe InDesign. Before I even touched Photoshop, I think I still worked on Quark Express for people who know about that. Adobe InDesign is the worst thing that can happen to you before you go into website design because in Adobe InDesign, you have absolute control over everything, where you want to put it and how you want it to look. It is the perfect tool for magazine and newspaper or document layout. In fact, I sometimes make more work for myself because instead of doing it in Word, I want to go and do it in InDesign because I've got all that control. So when I came into website, it was infuriating at the beginning because I just want to put it there and I just want it to look like this. Understand the limitations, understand the challenges, and then the most important part is make your choice. Make that decision. I want to have this instead of rounded corners. I know the rounded corners will look okay, but I think for a mobile interaction, having things in a horizontal stacked order with everything nicely centered or left aligned without two columns looks much better. Much better in my opinion. Whew. Okay, so this was quite, quite a big hero section that we had worked with. So let's just have a, a look at what we have over here. This is our hero banner. We have got a great image in the background. And also what we can do is we can make it parallax. So let's go back there, go to desktop, and then for our image, we're going to put it on fixed. 
and this will give us this effect on our desktop. And I think this is going to be, well, pardon the pun, eye-catching when you go and scroll through this site. That's excellent. So what's next? Next we're going to build out, I think, is services. So we'll be looking at this services. Nice background over here, another call to action, and then the four services, just info blocks to show you what they've got here at this luxurious spa experience. 